one of the things we've been talking about is, is the modern day kind of uh, unreality of Christendom and what we've got instead is not the gospel anymore, we've got uh, a mess of manipulation basically trying to make money and church has turned into a business. Love of money is what? Hello? Love of money is? Uh, and basically, if you go after the wrong thing, you're going to end up with a root in you. You need him. That's the truth. Truth is, we're dependent on him. Jesus said this when he was on earth. He said, of myself, I can do nothing. Now that was a statement of Jesus Christ. Now, he was both man and God. He was the Word made flesh. And yet he, the Word made flesh, and the whole of creation was upheld by the power of his Word, said, of myself, I can do nothing. Now if the God of all creation made it plain he could do nothing of himself, do you not think there is a possibility that you, if you're a follower of him, can't do anything of yourself? Well, I mean, isn't there a possibility? If Christ, the creator of heaven and earth, said of himself he could do nothing, do you not feel that there's a possibility that you aren't so valuable to God? Hello? Hello? You know, I, I, I'm, I'm surprised how many people get an inflated idea of their self-importance. Uh, God can't manage without them. He sure can. He's got millions of angels who do his bidding. Hey, he holds everything by the power of his word. Everything consists because of him, the Bible says. And yet I find there's so many people that have this idea that, you know, God, you know, um, you can really do with my help. He, he really can do without it. Uh, that's what I love about my God. Uh, he doesn't need us. We need him. And, and then he put it this way. He said, you know, I never speak of myself. What I hear the Father say, that's what I say. What I see the Father do, that's what I do. And he said, you know, my Father did the works from the beginning. Jesus honored the Father. And he said, look, You've got to understand, it's my father. And everywhere he went, he said, he that's seen me has seen the father. I'm in the father, the father in me. And we have to understand that my Jesus is the fullness of God. The total fullness of God. In him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In that body, walking on earth, was all the fullness of God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. I and my Father are one. That's the wonder. And we need to understand the wonderful grace of God. God the Father, God the Son... God the Holy Spirit dwelt bodily in him, in his body. Now my Jesus, when he went to Calvary, it said he suffered in the flesh. You know why he suffered in the flesh? Because he realized that man had a problem in his flesh. It wasn't him, it was sin that dwelt in him. Paul makes that plain in Romans. He said, look, 
It's, it, it's the sin. It's no longer I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. And it dwelt in them. And when we're not born again and when we're not regenerate, we're under the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that works in the children of disobedience. It's a spirit that works in someone. And Christ suffered in the flesh to get that spirit out of you forever. That's why I had to suffer in the flesh. Well, I've always got the problem with me. In other words, my Savior is only going to somehow do a half cock job and he's going to save me in my spirit but he's going to leave my problem in the flesh. No! Jesus suffered in the flesh for us to deal with the problem that's in the flesh. Is that plain? Hello? So it's no good. Well, I can't help it. You jolly well can't help it, but when you're born again, everything changes. Everything. And I find most Christians haven't had a real new birth. What they've had is they've made a decision for Jesus and they've said, I'll give my heart to Jesus. Well, he doesn't want your stinking heart. He doesn't need your stinking life. What he came to do was give you his life. Is that plain? Is that really plain? He doesn't want your rotten, twisted life. You know, a man's reprobate, devoid of any goodness by his first birth. By his second birth, he's transformed. Uh, and when you start telling people that, oh, you know, some people have said to me over this conference, oh, well, you, you know, it, it, it's over a period of time. Load of rubbish. When God meets you, you become a new creation in Christ. Old things are passed away. All things become new and all things are of God in Christ Jesus who have reconciled us unto himself. New creation means a total transformation. In your mind, in your body, in your spirit, in your being. You're a whole person. You, you can't be divided up into little bits. Well, God met my spirit, but he kind of didn't meet me, you know, anywhere else. And now I've got to fight for my soul. Uh, and eventually, you know, it might even get to my body. You know, but it's going to take time. No, he starts dealing. You, no man has sins in the flesh. 